First, there was the book. It caused considerable controversy in the early 1980s when it was first published. And now, the video film showing parts of the book plus additional material from old and modern times. Hi there, I'm Ed Reed. Before going further into this video film, I'd like to raise just a few points. As growing numbers of people from all levels of society, worldwide, become proud owners of present-day descendants of the old-time canine gladiator strains, demand grows for more definitive information about such fascinating animals. In answer to how they became such remarkably athletic, reliable, and intelligent dogs, nowadays sought after for their utilitarian uses as true working dogs, being highly prized protection, family, and companion dogs with, as we're now about to see, a background history that's almost larger and more flamboyant than life itself. Revelations on controversial issues are elaborated upon, some of which may not uh, be for the squeamish. Just a little. Being true history for information and uh, educational purposes. Game dogs or determined dogs, meaning one and the same thing, is what these dogs and this film are all about. Here, young terriers being introduced to Ratty. Magic matches were widely held events in bygone days, the back of pubs mainly. Dogs having a tussle in a public place a great many years ago, but it was not uncommon at those times. In bygone days, putting monkeys and apes onto dogs was quite an attraction to see who would win. The famous book, Jug of the Bush Belt, if you ever get the chance to get a copy of Jug of the Bush Belt, get it. It's a, based on a true story of a Staffordshire Bull Terrier in Africa during the late 1800s. These are only a few of a great many illustrations along with a fabulous story. In that book, get a copy if you can. It's highly recommended reading. On a bear hunt somewhere in Europe with two game dogs. These pieces are part of Cullen Shuttleworth's collection of unique pieces. I don't believe there are many copies of this statuette and several other pieces we're about to see, all of which are being displayed by Jackie. This is an old-time French fighting dog. Possibly the dog de Bordeaux, or French Mastiff. An excellent piece, nonetheless. It's a 
a very muscular dog, certainly in good condition. An old time mastiff or bulldog with puppies. An excellent piece. Part of Colin Shuttleworth's collection, of course. as I do, in books, videos, and uh, information about the gladiator dogs, I quite often receive inquiries from artists, uh, sculptors, uh, journalists, uh, legal departments, uh, zoologists, and various uh, academics, all of whom seek authentic aspects of these dogs, in contrast to the show dog folks with their often changing designer type breeds created for fashionable appearances. With that in mind, the following shows dogs have proven gladiatorial features, some of bygone days and others of more recent date on the Irish sporting dog scene. Now I cannot guarantee the veracity of all this, as I wasn't there, but I believe it is as presented and received in good faith beyond reasonable doubt accurate and authentic material in general and may i also add when in the following i may say uh, bs or i think there's a bit of bs here or a good bit of bs here You'll know, I mean, bullshit. As uh, not only is there a fair amount of the good old BS in everyday life, as you're no doubt aware, it's not unknown in the dog game as well. I trust you'll excuse my use of that expression, but I find it hits the nail on the head, and we all understand it. Ricky's Timber, a one-time winner at 46 pounds, a son of the grand champion Badger, R.O.M., with Ricky's daughter, Robin. Grand champion Duke, with Doc and kids and trophy for winning his fifth straight battle, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Ricky with champion Tasha, Staffordshire Bull Terrier female, 30 pounds, after her win over G.O.B. and Moffat's Lady, foregapped 14th of October, 87. Farmer's Boys Jocko, Staffordshire Bull Terrier male, also known as Griffin's Jigs, grandson of Champion Psycho, won two at 39 pounds. Smith and Walton's Grand Champion Badger, R.O.M., imported from Bobby Smith of Arizona, a five-time winner at 34 to 35 pounds sire of four recognized champions, three in the USA, one in Ireland. Naylor's champion Bob, a four-time winner, 10 years old in photo, American Pitbull Terrier. Daly's Jekyll, one, two, lost one, was a little brother to Billy Brooktail. J.O.B.'s and Moffat's Lucy, won in the September 93 convention in over two hours by Farmer's Boys Lucky Luciano out of Farmer's Boys Black Swan, American Pitbull Terrier female, 41 pounds.
Ricky with Grand Champion Nikki, a six-time winner, 38 and three quarters to 42 pounds. Female, American Pitbull Terrier, a good bitch recovering after her sixth win. Photo, October, 93. Ricky's Grand Champion Nikki. This second photo displays the head profile of this top-class gladiator, being, in Ricky's view, the best pit dog he's ever seen. She had it all. Her breeding below. Howes, Bonzos, and Lil. Two-time winner at 49 pounds. Female, American Pit Bull Terrier. Pure Reed Bloodline. Photo, May the 5th, 85. SB's Columbo, a great badger dog of the late 70s and early 80s, was a real handsome dog of 20 inches at the shoulder out of Flynn's old Peggy, who was the granddam of Champion Psycho on top, and traced back to the dog known as Hurley's Lynchon. Farmer's Boy's Flint, a son of Champion Psycho, out of Farmer's Boy's Old Bull Bitch, dam of Champion Stormer, was a two-time winner till he met Grand Champion Duke. Ricky, with Allen's Major, sired Champion Psycho, was a rated badger dog and is said to have won two off-the-chain matches pictured here in 1983, a quality bred background going way back. Champion Psycho, Farmer's Boys, on February 24, 85, the day he lost to Champion Stormer. Rahora Lass, bitter sister to Champion Psycho, 28 pounds, sold to England. Cork Rose, owned in the 1960s by George Hagerty, dam of Geronimo, Bruce, Lance, Brindle, and dam of the Red Dog who beat Dublin Bull, early 1970s, game bred going way back. Known as Fraser of Ireland in England and in Ireland as Boomerange. About 10 years old in this photo, he qualified in all trials he was entered in and won numerous unrecorded battles at about 35 pounds in condition. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Barris Gill's Bull, the dam of Champion Stormer, and Farmer's Boy's Flint, two-time winner, one-time loser, bred as below. Ricky's Charcoal, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, 30 pounds, male, traveled to England and won a time-limited match over P.P.'s Dar, Pitbull. Later, he lost to Grand Champion Duke.
Bo Daly's Grand Champion Shelley, five-time winner from 42 to 44 pounds, bred as Murphy's Baxter, Murphy's Tess. Farmer's Boys Rambo, American Pit Bull Terrier, 46 pounds, a one-time winner by Howell's Bull out of House Duchess. Rambo has sired numerous winners. Pictured 20th, 8th, 89. Gunnan's Billy, a good one at 36 pounds pit condition. A two-time winner, lost a long match in over two hours. A son of T.L.'s Hoss. J.D. and T.L.'s Hoss, seen above, and Lady Pedro were imported into Ireland from the yard of Tom Garner in the USA. Hoss grew into a big 55 pound of in condition in the early 1980s from an inbred Woods Snooty R.O.M. bloodline. He defeated three good dogs, but when unreported and unrecognized, therefore, Hoss went on sharing more winners than any other dog in modern Irish history. The list being far too long of his winning offspring to detail here, but is impressive indeed, and the line is still strong, some years on. Tony B's Tucker, American Pit Bull Terrier Mill, 47 pounds, four-time winner, cross of Hoss Reed Lines, photographed 91. The Grahams Smiley, a real hard-biting two-time winner, beating Ricky Sambo in one hour 15 and Burke's Samoa in 1 hour 45. American Pitbull Terrier, male. Naylor's Champion Bob, a 46 to 48 pounds son of Grand Champion Badger, R.O.M. Beat the following, Scalach, Male at 46 pounds in 57 minutes. Northside Kennels Tyson, male, 47 minutes in 47 pounds in one hour. Burks Buford, male, 46 pounds in 28 minutes. Cods Radar in 58 minutes. How's Duchess, imported from Pat Patrick in the early 80s at 42 pounds, a deep game bitch, sister to grand champion Red River Curly, a good producer by her sons, How's Bow, and Farmer's Boys of Rambo.
aspects of these dogs in general for reference purposes, as role models for scientific breeding programs, we now come to true temperament. The reliable man-dog relationship we acknowledge and appreciate today in these dogs goes back to bygone days, to their bulldog and terrier ancestry. Old-time bulldogs had to be steady and reliable when being handled at bull baiting, bear baitings, etc. Just imagine an unmanageable dog was out of the question at their work. Only the most even-tempered were used in the circumstances or to be bred from. As were the terriers at ratting matches, badger baiting matches, etc. When mixing the old bulldog with the old terriers, those characteristics were passed on into the new breed of Bulldog Terriers, now known as Pit Bull Terriers, and sporting Staffordshire Bull Terriers, renowned for their true temperament, being nowadays traditional. And if you'll excuse me for just a second, I have to go to the loo. I'll be right back. From their long history as preconditioned, highly manageable gladiators, even in the heat of battle, it's not surprising such a dog makes a superb canine companion all at the same time. As an example, in modern day levels, the following film clip illuminates just that point. Now, if you're all offended by a dog fighting scene, close your eyes now for a few minutes. filmed in Taiwan, where there's no restrictions on such activities. The main thing for showing this is to portray true temperament under pressure in battle conditions. We've seen that at no time whilst being handled did either dog show aggressiveness towards their handlers nor the people around them. I repeated the boy with dog scene several times, making the point that even a child can be safe aside such dogs in such conditions. Bred down for many generations, just such noble dogs 
has developed that admirable steadfastness found in these dogs. Indeed, most otherwise bred dogs would panic, be under stress, be most unmanageable in such conditions, which comes through another point. The least well-informed and most ignorant who brand these dogs as mongrels, like the Kennel Club and some of its supporters who hold that view, advanced breed students are first to realize that few other breeds have been as carefully bred as American Pit Bull Terriers in particular. Their finer qualities didn't come by magic. And to move on, I'm showing more clips from my book, Canine Gladiators of Old and Modern Times, with comments on certain issues which caused controversy at the time, in the 1980s, when that book first surfaced. When this kind of information first broke out, the shit really hit the fan. They'd never seen anything quite like it before. It showed what real fighting dogs look like without any doubts by these photos from the USA shown in the book. The show dog people in Stafford's and English Bull Terriers hated it, as it wasn't their imaginative versions of exaggerated features. It just presented the truth, which isn't popular amidst the show dog fraternity at all times. silver dollar in the teeth of a dog. A sharp eye before they were modified and wrinkled up for modern day purposes. Stafford's, somewhere on the continent during the late 1970s. An English Bull Terrier versus a Great Dane in the 70s, somewhere on the continent. with the same applying to two English Bull Terriers, females in this case. An English Bull Terrier who got to be quite an age, nine or 10 years old, qualifying game in Ireland in the Badger Trials. Same again with this dog. I believe the Red Hand of Ulster qualified at a late stage in the Badger Files. Read this on Frisco Sport.
the modern day English Bull Terriers make excellent companion dogs and pets. And we hear some are superb protection dogs around the home. Although not rated nowadays in serious hardcore activities, they've been bred far too long as pet and show dogs. Even then, a very, very popular dog, and for obvious reasons, worldwide, a very popular dog today, the English Bull Terrier, and why not? And here, some of Brian Plummer's working terriers around the late 1970s here in England. Marvelous little ratting dogs. Fast, courageous, they took the bites of the rats, brought them back. This was in the uh, chicken pens at night time. They would go in with the dogs, put the lights on quickly, let the dogs go, catching the rats on the trays. Only at a certain time of the year. But Brian Plummer's working terriers, marvelous little dogs. Crib and Rosa, seen here, are said to be what an ideal bulldog should look like. Filmed at a show in recent years, this is what British Bulldogs look like today. The differences in what they look like and what deeds they're supposed to be able to do are two very different matters, liberally sprinkled with plenty of BS thrown in which we'll come to shortly. Being likable, devoted people dogs as they are today, they're sought after as pets, etc. And for those who like them, such dogs have a charm all their own for modern day dog folk. You know, that uh, English Bulldog thing, that reminds me, uh, a few years ago there, I uh, went to a, a Bulldog show where I could see them, because you see, I hadn't been around these dogs very much at all, personally. I, I didn't know that much about them in that way, except what they look like and the things we hear about them. And so along I went, and uh, as it was, I bumped into these few fellows I used to know, and uh, they were into them. You know, they were into the English Bulldog and breeding and showing and so on and so forth. They were pretty straight shooters. So I asked them a couple of questions and I figured I'll get a straight answer. I knew them well enough that, you know, they'd tell me the way it was. And uh, my main question was, you know, all these things we hear about the English Bulldog, you know, the symbol of all this best in Britain, the British Bulldog, uh, tenacity and powerful and all the rest of it. So I asked them, I said, well, you know, what, what evidence do you have? Like, do you do anything with these dogs at all, uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, verify what they can do? And they both looked at each other and smiled, and they looked at me and says, well, uh, Ed, uh, <laughs> reality, uh, that, that don't come into it. And I says, uh, what do you mean? Well, they said, like, these dogs, they don't have to do anything. There's no trials or uh, tests of any kind at all. It's all just taken for granted. As a matter of fact, uh, we don't like to do too much with these dogs, because if they were really 
given something strenuous to do, they probably fall apart, that they collapse. And so, uh, to put it in a nutshell, uh, I says, uh, we do agree that there's a, in the English bulldog, there's a lot of bullshit. And they uh, sort of looked at each other and smiled and said, Ed, that just about sums it up. Well, <laughs> what can you say about that? Well, at any rate, uh, getting on uh, and moving on, uh, the remainder of this film presents uh, something different. Bits and pieces from friends, collections, some already shown by Jackie earlier on in those figures. And now we'll see some old prints, pictures, posters, figures, etc., which I think you'll find novel and interesting. Then we'll finish with some conclusions on what we've been viewing. visiting Cohen Shuttlewood. He suggested, if I like, just to take the camera and sort of uh, wave it around. And He's got such a variety of things that this was the easiest way to do it. So I just waved the camera around and took in these different scenes, all a part of his fascinating collection. He's quite a character himself, too, when you get to know him. A marvelous collection. As I said earlier, this is just a small part of it. I used to say that these fellows with the bulldogs, when the bulldogs get thrown into the air, they, they often caught them to break their fall. that one. I always liked it. And here, I was out at Ian Jensen's place with the camera. We got looking at a few things and I said to Ian, like, you know, what do you think if I film a bit of this? And being the, uh, what an agreeable fellow he is. He said, well, Ed, why not? So he got out a few bits and pieces. And again, I might add, these are only a few bits and pieces, but I think interesting ones that Ian uh, trotted out, put on the table, and assisted in uh, moving it about and so on, so that we could see it from different angles. Altogether, I think you'll find them very interesting. Ian Jensen's collection, you know, Ian and Barney, his white dog, his little white Stafford, Barney, and of course his Irish Stafford, Duchess. If you ever get the chance to see them, they're worth watching. Very lively dogs. It's a nice old statue there. Very small. Very smart.
This was a piece I liked. I always felt that it was just a little bit top heavy. Aside from that, an excellent piece, structure, overall features, just a little bit top heavy when you see it in profile. The head being just a little more than I think it should have been. Very nice piece. This is a beautiful piece, not a large one, you can see by the hand holding it up, uh, really one of the nicest pieces I've ever seen. in the uh, early 1800s, these guys enjoyed anything, anything with a punch up, anything rough and tumble, right down to themselves in many cases, they'd strip down and punch it out. So there were some gay men around too, same as there are today. Just in those times, the way they did it was different. These are some very interesting plates serving plates with the uh, graphics blazoned on too. Very, very attractive. Quite popular. These are taken from photographs sent down to me for this purpose. Very interesting. Very old prints, but just a different treatment. Conclusion, I remind viewers that what we've seen in this film is based on past history. It is not intended to inspire any wrongdoing with your dogs. The remarkable athleticism and general sporting propensities found in these dogs today is their inheritance from the hardcore dogs of the old school. Advanced breed students accept that if the hard living background hadn't taken place, we wouldn't have these outstanding athletes now, whose abilities are being redirected into accepted levels in present day society. Indeed, most present day owners in general consider pit purposes passe, outdated, and seek exercises and competitions which benefit their dog's health and well-being without risks to life or limb. 
there are such events being arranged, I can advise in due course. For academics, artists, sculptors, historians, journalists, etc., seeking the authentic old-time canine gladiators information, I believe there's plenty of info with recorded material to satisfy the most demanding for their purposes. I'm just going to have a little sip. Uh, to those going into breeding, showing, and perpetuating these dogs, there is ample role model material shown herein to create a breed standard for sporting Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Whilst the American Dog Breeders Association in the USA standard is well placed for American Pit Bull Terriers worldwide. Maintaining these dogs by modern day scientific methods is the way to go on the straight and narrow, which I strongly recommend. The following final scenes are popular ways of testing your dogs, determination, or gameness, without breaking the law as we know it. All of which, it's hoped, adds to your further information and education on these fascinating old breeds. Or gameness without breaking the law as we know it. 
all of which it's hoped adds to your further information and education on these fascinating old breeds.